The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 25 minutes to go until the start of trading. We have markets in higher territory. We had another high in the overnight market in the S&P. You see the move there as Europe opened. You accelerate higher to 44.92. Right now, you're trading at 44.81. We're positive by six points in the S&P. All the markets in in the green, you get the NASDAQ 100. We were as high as 15,384 overnight. We're currently positive by 36 points, 15,340. Dow's positive by 48 points as well this morning. And you got the Russell positive by six points this morning. When you jump over to Europe, we get the DAX barely positive right now. We'll call it one tenth percent over in the positive in the DAX. The FTSE negative by four tenths percent. CAC Coral negative by six tenths percent. Over in Asia, you got some positive action. Some of those stocks catching a little bit of a rebound after quite a pullback recently. Nikkei up about nine tenths percent. Shanghai up just more than one percent. In the Hong Kong, uh, Hang Seng up two point five percent. A little bit of optimism there. Um, rising in China after quite a pullback. And why not? We'll start it off with Diddy. Uh, speaking of China, a little bit of a pop in Diddy. Now, I'm talking about it many times, folks. Now, Diddy goes public as recently as, and look how quickly. I mean. Two months, folks. That is how quickly the world has changed over in China. Remarkable that it's that recently. <coughs> Excuse me. We have Diddy going public on June 30th. You spike to 1801. The pain really begins a couple of days later when the market figures out that China is not going to be as welcome to some of these stocks going public as we thought. It trades from 18. It trades to 12. It makes a little of 716. Yes, you're catching a pop today. You're up to 807 from 772. Now, Diddy, they got some chairs. Uh, news of their own going on. They are going to postpone the move into Europe. They had weighed entering the UK, Germany, and France this year, grappling with a government crackdown, as they say at home. They're going to put that off at least a year. Uh, market may be liking that in the fact that they have enough to go on right now in China. Probably not going to happen anyway. Nonetheless, you're catching a pop, but I would not be touching these equities whatsoever. There's plenty of other good opportunities um, when you're not dealing with stocks that are at the whim of the Chinese dictator over there, Xi, in a big way. Diddy, let's check out Alibaba this morning, catching a little bit of a pop off the bottom. But I mean, look at the pain that this equity, we're talking about getting cut in half from October. And even if you look where we were when Diddy went public, just for some reference here, you go from 230. <coughs> Excuse me, down to 161. Quite a haircut for Alibaba out there in a big way as well. Let's jump over to Uber, which I like over there. Been in a little bit of a pain. Now, Uber, I talked about it on my show yesterday. Really interesting action on Uber yesterday. They lose a ruling in California. They have a judge overruling saying that the ballot measure they had was unconstitutional. Now, what's interesting here is I talked about on my show. Let's see where 9 o'clock is. By 9 o'clock, Uber had already popped back to 38.66. And the reason why I want to talk about this, yeah, Uber's been in trouble recently, folks, okay? Um, not sure this is where the pain stops, of course. Uh, you've dropped to 50% of the full retracement we had from COVID. You've come into an area that was an area of resistance. Maybe that's area, an area po turning into support at the 50% retracement. Uh, there's going to be a lot of news coming out for Uber when it has to do with gig workers, whether it has to do with gig workers, versus full employment, benefits, et cetera. Uh, I was surprised to see the reaction pre-market yesterday over a judge in California basically saying that California voters had got it wrong. It's unconstitutional for them to say that Uber workers should be classified as gig workers, when in reality, folks, I think even without a ballot measure, that the core of these businesses is gig workers. And I'm biased, we have Uber in there. I wanna see people have livable wages. You can think both things though, folks. You can think that you want people to have livable wages. I fully support a $15 minimum wage. Florida, a pretty red state right now, fully supports a $15 minimum wage when it's taken out of the Democrat versus Republican It's just put up in its own measure. Point being, with the court we have, that's going to the Supreme Court if anything. 
And that's on this court, I see very, very difficult that they'd overturn one of the most liberal states in the union voting for gig workers uh, in, a, in a company even without a vote. Seems like it would make sense. Nonetheless, remarkable action, right? You trade from 37.62 by about 10.45. You were in the positive in a decent way, and you finished actually up about a dollar yesterday, 2.5% in the positive for Uber. Market had accelerated higher as well, but you're talking about a solid almost 10% from the lows that we had. I talk about in my newsletter, you know, the pain has been pretty extraordinary in this equity. It's a volatile equity, folks. You see it yesterday when you trade up to almost 10% from the lows to the highs. Uber, I mean, the variables that they're dealing with from multiples and the, and the market capitalization of this equity, it's tough because there's so much up in the air in terms of COVID hampering down travel, hampering down ride sharing, how that's going to play into their food delivery business, et cetera. But nonetheless, strong day yesterday. So if you're taking a look at those equities, do not be phased, I would say. Now, yes, if you get some states and they decide to vote, those states decide to vote that they want those citizen, um, those workers to be classified as workers. Yeah, that could put a hamper on it. But I don't see that really happening anytime soon. And I don't see it crushing the business plan of these equities like Uber. Let's take a look at DoorDash. Not quite the same deal yesterday. DoorDash trades lower Friday. A little bit of a pop yesterday with the market. And let's take a look at Lyft as well. Lyft shares uh, a little bit up today. It was interesting. I wanted to see how Uber was trading because as they talked about in that article, Diddy not getting into Europe for a year. Uber's in Europe. Lyft, not in Europe. So that could be a benefit to Uber out there. Again, I'm biased. We got it in my newsletter, nonetheless. All right, let's jump around to some of the other stocks making moves. Best Buy, out with their numbers, strong numbers in a big way. Consumers are upgrading tech to work at home. Makes sense, right? Remarkable that they're still doing it, though. Sales grew 20% in the fiscal second quarter as people permanently embrace habits like working from home and streaming TV. Streaming TV, remarkable, but it's 2021. I guess it's time. COVID just pushed everything forward. Uh, retailer raised its forecast for the second half of the year as well. Dramatic and structural increase in the need for technology. The CEO said there, when you get into the numbers, big numbers, 298 versus $1.85 for Best Buy. They beat by almost 400 million, 11.85 billion in the quarter versus 11.49. Income 734 million up from 432 million. Now remember, this is one of the stocks that actually benefited, right, during the shutdowns. Uh, yes, there they are. Best Buy, you spike from 112 to 116. We put this on a three-year weekly for the full context of where we've been here. You start off COVID at 90 bucks, you make it to 50, you accelerate up to 120 pretty quickly. And this morning, we're going to open at about 116. So we're coming up to the upper boundary line of this consolidation. That would be about 120, give or take, just maybe above that, maybe 123 or so is going to line up with the top of the bodies there. Strong numbers for Best Buy and encouraging in terms of how long this can go on. Sales online and stores open at least four months. Same store sales. 20% versus a year ago period. And again, this is a company that was dealing with some pretty decent comps a year ago. That was higher than the 18.1% growth they were looking for. It anticipates revenue. It's going to range from 51 to 52 billion. Same store sales growth in the range of 9 to 11%. Market was only looking for 3 to 6%. It's quite a beat in a big way. Um, yeah, so kind of just beating it all across the board. And as you see, Best Buy trading higher this morning. They're going to open about 116.50 right now for Best Buy. All right, folks, stay tuned. We come back after the break. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim Fast Market. We'll talk uh, some equities. We'll talk some earnings. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, 
TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Good morning, folks. We got the S&P up six points right now. We got the NASDAQ up 29, the Dow up 52. Russell positive as well. We got all the markets in positive territory. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, live on Tiger TV from the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, and the team breaking down the market action, giving you great segments on what's going on in the markets for that day, breaking down hypothetical trades, walking you through defined risk options, multi-leg trades. It's the whole deal. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Uh, you know, uh, here we go, Tuesday. You know, th th this market is interesting. I think we're um, feeding off right now some really positive news out of China. Hank saying up 2.4% overnight. Some releasing of travel restrictions have some of the casino stocks win in Las Vegas stands, trading higher to start the day. But all things considered, we're up slightly. I think two things worrying this market are coronavirus, China. Well, China seems to be doing a little better. The Delta variant seems to be doing a little bit better. And uh, this market now is starting to whisper coming out that Jerome Powell is going to be dovish and not hawkish on Friday's speech. So not, not that there's any way that he could be hawkish. There would be no reason right now for him to be hawkish but i think this is a market that's you know hesitantly positive at least to start the day tommy you know it's remarkable kevin so we talk to you every tuesday wednesday thursday at 9 15 for our second segment of the program getting ready for the market open at 9 30 and i just pulled up the chart kevin because i'm getting ready to talk to you and i said you know it feels like we we're in a little bit of a different place. Uh, when I last talked to you, I think we we're a little bit lower. And I pull up the chart, and sure enough, we're about 130 S&P points higher, Kevin, than when we talked to you Thursday morning, a remarkable bounce. And we kind of talked about um, whether maybe the market pulling back a little bit, see how it reacts on the open, of course. And we've got quite an acceleration Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, I joke with friends, man, it's remarkable the resilience of this market. And we all kind of joke if you're in it or, or even, you're, you know, every time, Kevin, this thing seems to pull back. Uh, we get quite an acceleration. We're dealing with higher territory. We're almost at 4,500 in the S&P futures right now. Uh, when you look at the legs on this market, you know, we talk about Chairman Powell, of course. We got Jackson Hole. I believe he's speaking at 10 o'clock on Friday. Um, what do you look for in terms of these dips that we get? I mean, that's quite a almost 3% in the S&Ps from when we were talking Thursday morning, man. 
you know, I think, Tommy, that you're, look, you know, there's, there's things that you look at for the market. And the fact that interest rates still sit at 1.26, right? But there was some worries out of China. I think some of the things going on in China right now are concerning our stock market in terms of their government intervention in businesses and things like that. But that seems to be dissipating. The Delta variant, which has been hanging around now for you know, a month, five, six weeks, it looks like parts of the South are starting to um, dissipate here or plateau in terms of the cases. That's good news. And I think the market is looking for that. But, uh, you know, the, the, you know we're, we're still up at all-time highs. We're still extremely shaky. You've got a VIX still sitting above 17 to start the day. So this market... Today should be a day of some consolidation, but it certainly picks up pace the rest of the week with durable goods tomorrow that is looking, the headline number is looking down, but without autos, it's looking up. So still a lot of volatility with terms of the auto market, but in terms of Jerome Powell, what he's going to say Friday, there is zero reason for him to talk about anything hawkish based on all the things in this economy that are still question marks, Tommy. It was kind of in the back of my head, man. You make some great points. Just, uh, you know, the Fed minutes freaked everybody out a little bit last week. And I said, you know what, just in, this is my own personal bias. So I said, you know what, Chairman Powell's coming out, you know, next week, man. And, and I have a feeling that he might calm this market as he has continually because he talks about the meetings he needs, right? The, the, the hardcore evidence of that job growth of maximum employment. And the bottom line is we're just not there, man, with 8 million jobs. So I imagine... And it's just interesting. The market, of course, it gets ahead of that, and we're already at all-time highs. Uh, the other thing out there, Kevin, man, you guys talk about it all the time, is earnings. We got some big earnings driving this market higher in a big way. Best Buy, another company coming out, man, just strong, strong numbers on an equity that, that was kind of crushing it a year ago even. You know, as you were coming in, people stocking up, and they're still stocking up. It's just remarkable that the earnings are really driving this market, which is the fundamentals of, of you know, everything we're doing here. So it's kind of not lofty to, to a stupid level when you really look at it's continual, man. I'm almost getting used to the fact that every single earning, and I'm exaggerating, right? But so many earnings just are crushing estimates as we round out this kind of season uh, coming coming to an end pretty shortly. Yeah, be Best Buy up over $4, Tommy, because they beat on earnings, they beat on revenue, and they greatly increased guidance for the rest of the year. So if you think about it, the actual data coming out on this economy is actually very healthy. Some of the forward-looking data, some of the sentiments are what are starting to come into question and, and make this market hesitate. But, Tommy, at the end of the day, it's earnings and it's interest rates. And earnings are, are spectacular and interest rates are low. And the rest is very noisy, but I'm not sure that means as much as earnings and interest rates, Tommy. I'm excited for the no the the noise, as you say, as a trader, man. man when we come in, and we've talked about it. The next couple months, man, you have uh, the benefits, the extra benefits expiring in September. We're gonna get you know a couple more months of those job numbers in there, and we're gonna have some more noise, man. And as we see, we get a little bit of volatility in those markets when we get some of that noise, uh, even if it's a little short-lived, as we've seen in these pullbacks in the indices. Well, Kevin, we got your program coming up in an hour and a half. What do you got? Guys, going to be talking about the fast market today. Today's real easy, Tommy. It's all about retail. It's Nordstrom, it's Urban Outfitters, and it's Dick Sporting Goods. All re oh, retail is detail, Tommy, and that's what we're covering today. Talk about an interesting sector. Uh, interesting even before COVID, right? But throwing a wrench in things. Nordstrom, man, we've talked about Nordstrom. Nordstrom. Rack, I'm a big fan of Nordstrom Rack. They got kind of both sides of that, the premium brand, and then they go into the discount. And Dick Sporting Goods, man, that thing has just been quite a stock. I remember in the beginning of the COVID shutdowns, Kevin, I think I had to go buy a pair of sneakers, and they were one of the first companies that I at least participated where they had, you know, a, a curbside takeaway that I'd only done at Outback Steakhouse prior to COVID. And there I was ordering sneakers. People dropped them off at my window at my car, sitting out in front of Dick's Sporting Goods. And man, this thing is a rocket ship. All time highs is that yesterday, I think. Sure enough, 112 from $13 at the COVID lows, man. Well, Kevin, we look forward to the program. We look forward to the education as always. We appreciate you coming on, talking to us this morning, and we'll be watching at 11 o'clock, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. You too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in every trading day. They're going to be talking about retail today. I'm going to be watching at 11 o'clock. An outstanding program every day. I talk about it.
that's the reason why we have Kevin on to give you a glimpse of the education he provides every trading day on that program, Fast Market. Taking a look at the markets, we're kind of just waiting for the open, sitting in positive territory where we've been sitting at for most of the overnight session. Got the S&Ps up seven points right now. now NASDAQ 100 up 32. Taking a look at some of the FANG stocks as we come into the open. Amazon shares, quite an acceleration higher. You back up Amazon, right? You're $110 above where we're trading at when we last talked to Kevin Hanks on Thursday morning. How about Microsoft, right? The moves that we're talking about here, folks, from Thursday to this morning, Microsoft did it all practically in two days. Microsoft was trading at 288. We're $16 above where we were trading at there. Apple shares on Thursday morning was at 145. We're pushing 150 this morning. Google shares on Thursday morning was at about 2700. Well, we're above 2800 this morning at 2829. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back in three minutes for the market open. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got markets in positive territory. S&P's positive by six. NASDAQ hanging on to gains. We're up by 22 points in the NASDAQ 100. The Dow positive by 57. And the Russell positive by eight points right now. Jumping around to commodities. Crude catching quite a bit off the lows we have Sunday night. You trade from 61.74. We're almost pushing $67 in crude this morning. Quite a pop. Talk about some volatility. Gold contract up to 18.11 this morning. We're still positive by about $3. We're back a bit to 18.09. 
You jump to silvers up 21 cents, catching a bid. Silver, a solid dollar off where we were on Friday. Notes and bonds, a little bit of consolidation here. We'll put this thing on a daily for context. Excuse me, you got the 10 year negative two ticks trading at 134.04. You got the 30 year negative 15 ticks at 165.11. For some context to where I have this chart, we're talking about, and what, this is what I was looking at one thing in my newsletter when I sent out. Uh, we have now bounced price wise in the 10 year. Okay, if you're looking for higher rates, which a lot of people are, we're at about 1.25% right now. Let's see exactly what we are as we have this conversation. 1.27%, all right? 1.273 to be exact. 1.27% in the 10-year right now. If you're looking for higher yields, that would mean lower price, correct? Well, if you're talking about lower price in the 10-year, from the highs that we had back last August, that was when we were correlating to a yield of about half a percent, okay? You trade from 140.14, down to about 130.26, almost 10 full points, remarkable. From there, you rise approaching the 50%. Now, if you just take the bodies though, okay? If you just take the bodies of these candles, we've bounced to a 382. It's an area you wanna keep your eye on because if we turn down from there, if you ever get an A to B equals C to D, you're talking about trading to about 125. 125, for some context of 125. You're talking about downtown we go. Doesn't mean that's going to happen, folks, but just an area to keep your eye on. We are at basically the 382 of that full move. I'm going to back it up a little bit more so you can see it all. Zoom in on the run. That was your high back there in August. You trade down, as I mentioned, to 130.26. Just to keep in mind, we've bounced about the 382. If we do turn lower from there, maybe that's the run as we start to see some higher yields in the 10-year. Putting it back on a 15-minute action, you can see not a huge movement considering the moves that we've had in the market. There's your move last Wednesday on the Fed minutes down to 133.29. And we're basically sitting right where we came into those minutes in the Fed at 134.03. Kind of, as I mentioned, right there where we were coming into that number. All right, jumping around to what else we got going on, taking a look as the, at the VIX. As Kevin had mentioned, 1728 really taking back some of the gains we had from the highs, the spike on Thursday when the market was in some negative territory. But we're well off some of the lows that we've had, right? You look at where we are. We were in the lows of a 14 handle back in June. We had a low of 1519 as recently as 11 days ago. We were at 1538 back in April, still up at 1728. Anytime you get that type of volatility, that type of negative action in the market, it's going to take a little while to recoil to the lows of the VIX. Anytime the market figures out that, hey, guess what? We might get moves of 100 points in the S&P on a period of one day. That's almost a 2.5% move, folks. Big time. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump down the line of some of the equities with their earnings. We talked about Best Buy. They're out with their numbers in a big way. Palo Alto Networks accelerating as well. They beat by 16 cents quarterly earnings, revenue above estimates, and upbeat outlook. As Kevin said, it's all about what you're going to do for me in the future. There is a little bit of fear in this market that the outlook may wane a bit. But there's your acceleration, and we're popping even higher. You're up 15% on that equity. Let's see how Palo, uh, Best Buy is trading, continuing to pop. You're up about 5.5%. We'll jump to some of the China stocks. Diddy, 8%. Be careful, folks. That's a tempting number when you got stocks pumping 8%. Uh, but I would not be touching it. Baba, let's see. And as Kevin mentioned, you know, maybe this is the Max Payne situation, right? You got Alibaba up almost $20 from the lows just yesterday that we had. Again, context is important, folks. This thing just got cut in half. Cut in half. If you're on margin, all your money's gone. All of it. Say goodbye. Uh, for almost for amusement to see the kind of retracements we're dealing with, folks, in a dead cat bounce. All right, looking at just a 382 from this run that it's had. And folks, this is just a run on Alibaba from November of last year. Okay, you're talking about this thing could reach 217 and still be on the way down. Now, you want a little bit of a shorter time frame? All right, let's go to where we were when Diddy went public. All right, well, this is a weekly. Let's put it back on a daily. We're talking about June 30th. All right, for some context, just on Alibaba, again, we're going to zoom in on the action. There's your June 30th action, all right? And let's see what kind of volatility we're talking about for a dead cap bounce here. Maybe up to 182 would still be just a 3A2. Interesting, that's where you got the bounce originally back in late July on those stocks as well. 
All right, continuing to jump down the line, Camping World. They're going to up their quarterly dividend and double it to 50 cents from 25 cents. Uh, payable on the 28th of September to shareholders. You have Camping World, CWH. That's Limonis, right? Is it? I believe so. Up 5.5% for that equity this morning on that news. Uh, Medtronic's out with their numbers. This is what I was talking about, Kevin. You know, I'm getting ready for the program. I'm looking at what equities are moving. I'm looking at some of the companies out with earnings, and it's like a constant beat estimates by quarterly profit, revenue topped estimates as well, helped by a rebound in demand. Um, and the only question mark usually is what's the outlook? Not all companies beating on the outlook, but Medtronic, MDT, uh, with their numbers, you're trading up 1.4% today, uh, approaching the higher levels that we've had back in August and in April as well. We talked about Diddy. Uh, Kevin had mentioned the casinos are trading a little bit higher today. We got Las Vegas Sands up. We got Wynn up, trading higher following the easing of travel curbs in Macau. They do so much business in Macau, folks. I'll try and get up a chart um, of the gaming revenue in Macau versus the gaming revenue that they achieve in Las Vegas. Las Vegas has turned into a travel destination for tourism that goes well beyond gambling folks i encourage you if you haven't made it out there if you have a family even you know i talked to my family said listen we're not going to go out and play poker all, all all the whole trip i might play a little bit of poker if i have the time but just the the sheer extravagance of the casinos the restaurants available the pools that are available the sightseeing that's available they got amusement rides going on out there uh it's a big difference in macau man they're just making money off gambling because boy do they love to gamble in macau uh so that's a big deal las vegas sands will pull up their chart these things talk about some max pain situations here uh down to 36 from 66 earlier in the year talk about the world changing in terms of just not quite as rude as we thought it was going to be so quickly as the vaccine started to get administered this thing really skyrocketed and just like that you almost get cut in half down to 36 but just like that again we've popped about 15 percent from the lows we're up five percent on that let's back it up even further there's your three-year weekly and and then again remember these stocks when you look at them right the pain early on for companies operating in China, that's why you see the volatility here, whether it was in January of 2020, they dropped from 74 down to 61, 20% haircut before the pain really began once it started to escalate worldwide and you trade down to 33 and win. Same scenario, they had volatility early when it just looked to be in China, maybe hitting them in Macau. As the whole world locked down, you traded down to 35 bucks. Now on a weekly, you're catching a little bit of a pop and yeah, I mean, these are some of the equities, folks, whether you're looking at some of the airlines, maybe Boeing, maybe some of the gaming stocks, maybe some of the travel stocks. There's a lot of pain out there. And let, let me put it this way. If you're looking at catching a falling knife, I'd much rather catch a falling knife buying a share like Wynn or buying a share like Las Vegas Sands. Still a dangerous game than buying any of those Chinese equities, folks, where you're really playing with fire over there. Stay tuned, folks. We get the S&Ps up by are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get markets in record territory with the S&P is positive by six points right now at 44.81. As I talked to Kevin Hicks, it is remarkable how often we've been setting records in this index, uh, in any index. When you talk about the NASDAQ 100, we're pushing 15,330 right now. The Dow just off the highs by about a couple hundred points, 35,335. The Russell has been the laggard. In a big way, we're talking about not making highs in the Russell of almost five months, approaching really six months. You see the consolidation. Now, man, I love consolidation zones, folks. I love whether it's defined channels, sometimes defined consolidations. I mean, let's just show anytime you're doing this, right? Not, does not take a rocket scientist, folks, to look at this chart and see where we're dealing with consolidations. Now, yeah, are we talking about the higher boundaries, about 2,300? You could make a real argument there. You got half going back. I'm just going to size that up. You're talking about the first highs in February. You're talking about the highs in April. You're talking about the highs in late April. Just got just got above those levels in June again. Now, or you could push it a little bit higher, right? And the higher boundary is talking about a price point of about 2350 in that, but pretty well defined, folks. Look at how many times on the lower boundary line, the Russell, keep that on your radar. You're talking about just above 2100. The lows we had, that is going back to Friday, I believe. Yes, it is. Friday, August 20th. 2109 each time we get down to that level you're seeing a pop in this russell last time though we only climbed to about a price point of 2251 but still you're talking about almost 140 points in the russell that i mean what is that that's about six percent six and a half percent almost from 2100 to 2250 keep your eye on it it popped a bit we're at about about 100 points just from where you were trading on Friday, but pretty well defined on the Russell there in terms of that consolidation. Speaking of stocks that had been consolidating, how about Netflix and the acceleration Netflix has going on? Now, it's parents, some of the gains it's had. We put this thing on a three-year weekly to get the full run. And as I mentioned, consolidation, we're talking about an area of about lower boundary line, 475. We'll call the upper level there at about 560. 65 or so that's a weekly you know what let's put this on a daily five-year daily i'm going to zoom it in on the same time frame and as you can see where it is right where's the top boundary line about where i pegged it i think about 563 and man the run this has had going to be interesting to see though netflix coming up we're only about 10 bucks away from that upper boundary line now the last time you were bumping into that level we came out with earnings the time before that you were bumping into that level came out with earnings uh maybe maybe just maybe we'll see how we trade but keep your eye on it those zones it's just nice and clear, folks. If you're short in a market, it's nice and clear, right? You set up a short, you know you're wrong, you get out. On the Russell side, maybe you're buying 2109, maybe you're buying 2110, it gets back down there, trades below that level. That's the plan, you're out. It's, it's nice when you have your back against the wall, is the phrase, right? You know your trading plan, you know the area, you're looking for a pop. I mean, look at the boundary line. If you get Netflix down to 480, 
that's a pretty easy buy right there. Maybe you set your stop down just below 460 because look how many times that would have paid off. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to get back down there, folks. That may be the consolidation. I mean, we're talking about a 14-month consolidation in Netflix right now. Um, keeping with that theme, consolidations. Amazon, quite the consolidation. We do break out of that area right on Andy Jazzy taking off. They come out with their earnings, and we come back to that level. We were just under 3,200. Now, you could argue that it got a little bit ahead of itself on some optimism there. We're right in the middle of that consolidation area for Amazon. You're talking about just under 3,000. The upper boundary line would be about 3,519. Really interesting how we accelerated above that area with volume, but we also plowed below that area with volume on their earnings on July of last, uh, ju last month in late July. All right, jumping around to what other stocks or stories, we're going to jump to real estate a little bit. So, Texas cities dominate list of best places to buy a home. We got a couple Florida cities in there as well, but five of the top six cities in the new analysis are in the Lone Star State, few in the Northeast. I mean, what it has to do with folks is quality of life, all right? The ability to buy a house that's affordable and still have jobs that go with it. In a lot of parts of the country, right? Real estate's very cheap, but it's very cheap because there's not a lot of jobs to come by. Maybe it's just very rural, whatever it is. In lots of parts of the country, real estate is very cheap in the context of what it is in other parts of the country, specifically, right? Some of the biggest cities out there in the Northeast and other parts. Uh, New York City comes to mind first and foremost. Um, it's part of the reason why I moved down to Florida. Remarkably, 15 years ago, something crazy like that, speaking of craziness, 15 years ago approaching, it's really more than that. It's about... 17 years, 16, 17 years I've been down in Florida, which is remarkable. But I remember when I made the move, folks, it was prior to 2005, because I was here before my 25th birthday, also bananas to think about time in that context. Um, and I remember when I made the move down here at the time, uh, my sister had been down here the year prior. She ended up wanting to head back to, to Boston to spend some time with the family and missed uh, the seasons, which I understand as well, because, man, I miss those seasons when we're in late August in Florida right now. Uh, but I remember that she had moved down a year before me. So we're talking about 2003, 2004, and she got a beautiful apartment, one bedroom apartment, beautiful complex, place has a pool in the complex. Um, I believe it was in Largo, right near Clearwater for under $500 a month. Even back then, folks, that was crazy, okay? Now, now that is not 500 right now. That's probably a, maybe a thousand or something like that. But that was part of the reason you could not find a place in the metro Boston area for around 500. And I think when I moved down, I was paying like 575, maybe maybe 600, something like that. Again, mind blowing rent for a year approaching 2005 when it comes with a beautiful complex that comes with a pool and amenities included. It just did not exist. It's part of the reason that brought me down here. Uh, we got a big city. We got a top 20 city, right? We got major sports teams here. We got. Whether it's, we got three major sports teams, folks. We're only missing basketball, which is in Orlando. We got hockey, football, and baseball. Baseball struggling. Rays are having a great year, and they just can't put any fans into the seats. It's a tough one. Baseball's a tough one. It's a slow sport um, with 160 plus games a year, and, and they, it's a tough one to pull people in. Hockey's my sport, man. Nothing like it. We got a great team in Tampa. How about it? Um, and how about those Bucks as well with Mr. Tom Brady himself? Getting back to the story, though, uh, it makes sense in terms of these cities. You got some big ones. Frisco, Austin, right? McKinney, Texas, Denton, Allen, Texas. You got Durham, North Carolina in there. Reno, Nevada. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Of course, some big ones in there that come to mind. When you talk about New York, yeah, they are way down the wrist, uh, list in a big way. And I'm going to get into some of what they talk about. So... California and Texas, two of the largest U.S. states, well represented, more than 80 of the ranked cities in the Golden State. Um, Texas has 21 cities on the list. Florida has 17. Orlando's number 44. Tampa, number 57. And Port St. Lucie, number 66. When you look at New York and New Jersey, uh, New Jersey City, Jersey, uh, Jersey City, that's an interesting one. Been there a couple times. 165th. Uh, New York's top ranked home buying market was Buffalo at 180 and New York City came in at number 282. Uh, another interesting piece out here, Boomberg opinion piece, not familiar with the writer here at all, but man, we're seeing it, right? It says the headline is in the housing boom, mortgages are for losers. And what it's talking about, man, for, mortgages are for losers. The time uh, They are for losers though, when you get into a bidding war with these cash buyers, folks, we all know the stories, right? Um, 
big money Wall Street is in the business, whether it's investors that ain't big money Wall Street, investors in period are in the business, they're buying up the homes, cash buyers everywhere, and they make a great point in here. We're gonna talk about a little bit more, it's something to wrap your brain around though, because man, we need people to have home ownership. That is the way that you kind of rise up in a big way, and uh, it's a tough one right now. And they talk about maybe the home homestead exemption, up a bit to those first time home buyers, and that may be, uh, it's interesting to think about because, man, it's a tough market for those first-time home buyers. Talk about a little bit more. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now up about eight points. And uh, thanks to my dad in there and the Tigers, Danny Simon. Interesting. So I found him. Somerset Apartments in Largo, Florida. Today's rents, folks, 1300 to 1675 And that was the one I was talking about. That was about 500 bucks a month for the lower end um, small one-bedroom apartment in about 2005 for 500 to 1300 over 15 years. Now, what's interesting is where I move next give you my whole history is post rocky point which is a beautiful complex uh three pools over in there they're starting at 1670 for a one bedroom folks uh and a beautiful complex in tampa if you're familiar with it by rocky point by bahama breeze by the courtney campbell bridge i think i was paying about a thousand bucks a month going back to maybe 2006 2007 talk about an acceleration in a big way and that probably ramping up each year from here on out as rents really rising in a big way 
<coughs> excuse me. Now, what they talk about here in this Bloomberg opinion piece is talking about the homestead. And they talk about here, you know, that the government is trying um, to address this in terms of the supply shortage by ensuring a higher percentage of federal back mortgages go to low income households or households communities share minorities but what they talk about is it can't happen when you're competing with cash buyers that are investment um grade now you know this is going to be a big you know a little uh controversial maybe you know it would be the deal um but they make the point that the mortgage interest deduction is not doing it because you got interest rates so low it's not a big enough advantage to have a mortgage interest deduction in there with some of the abilities that they're trying to do in the fed the one thing that could do it though is that the homestead exemption, and you could have local governments increasing the amount that's covered in the homestead exemption, that would allow them to raise property taxes, but not for people who are in that home as their actual home, all right? Now, I got no problem with that, folks. Even as a person in real estate, my dad does a ton of real estate, all right? But society is not gonna function if people aren't able to hold, hold, own houses and only Wall Street and rich investors are, all right? And I know that there's a ton of people, I'm a landlord, folks, all right? Not every landlord is rich. Some people are doing it to earn a living. Something to think about, though, in the face that we're in right now with people struggling um, to match it up. You're talking about some areas, 50 plus offers for first time home buyers in that sweet range of 250,000. Thanks so much for starting the day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up live next. Live programming all day at TFNN. We got the S&P at record territory. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.